Hello, my name is Evan. I'm from Musician's Friend, and I'm here with Devin from Electron. How you doing, Evan? I'm great. How are you? Very good. Thank you. We have this beautiful instrument sitting here in front of us, and what is this? I know this is called Analog Keys, Four Voice Analog Synthesizer. You got it. So it's four voices, and each of those voices has its own dedicated step sequencer track. So you can start loading up sounds and creating lush sequences that sound like this. So uh, you mentioned four voice analog synthesizer, so that would mean four voice polyphony. You can use the four voices in, in a multitude of ways. You could have a single patch played as a four note chord, you can have a single patch stacked with four voice unison, or you can even hit one note and have four separate patches playing. So there's all sorts of different ways to use four voices. So it is fully analog, no digital architecture. The signal path is fully analog, but we also have high quality reverb, delay, and chorus available under the hood that you can send any of the four voices to. That's how we're getting these lush presets. And you mentioned that each voice has its own sequencer. Yes. Now, how many steps would each of those see? That's a good question. Normally, when you see something like this, you would think, well, it's 16 steps, so you have a one bar sequence. With all electron step sequencers, you can actually go up to four bars, so you'd have a 64 step sequencer, but you can easily chain multiple patterns together and even get an eight bar sequence or a 16 bar sequence if you wanted to. So, could I have four 16 step sequences? amongst the four voices, like one 16-step sequence per voice? Think of it as a four-track tape recorder. You have a loop going, and then you control, you have full control over each of those layers. However, each of your four voices can have its own length, its own sequence length, so you can get into things like polymeter and polyrhythm. So it's basically like having your own step sequencer per voice, and each one is gonna be 16 steps. Yeah, or up to 64 steps. Each gotcha. one can be, yeah, each of the four tracks can have up to 64 steps. Got it. So what we have here, we have our endless rotary encoders, which control any of your synth and effect parameters, but if I go into performance mode, these knobs now become macro knobs, which can control up to five parameters at once with bi-directional values. I could turn one knob, and it would turn down three of my voices and turn up the fourth voice, and maybe open the filter up on that voice too. So you can pack a lot of power, a lot of performance power, into each one of these performance knobs. You told me about performance mode. I noticed that this says ARP. Is this an arpeggiator? Yes. In fact, each of the four voices has its own arpeggiator, and you can set them all independently. So for example, on, on voice one, you know, I could have no arpeggiation. Uh, voice two, I could have it be going at a certain uh, certain speed, you know, certain BPM or certain note value, and then track three, I can have that at a different note value, and instead of you know extending across two octaves, it could be three octaves or one octave. So, all four arpeggiators are completely independently settable. And I know it's oscillator one and oscillator two. This is a two oscillator. Yeah, exactly, so exactly. So. Uh, each voice has two oscillators, and each oscillator actually has a sub-oscillator. So even with a single analog voice, you can get some very beefy tones. And if you notice here on the back, uh, each of those voices has its own dry output, so you can go into a mixer and add more effects if you want. It's 37 keys, and it's velocity and aftertouch sensitive. You can assign velocity to up to five different synth parameters, and then aftertouch to five different synth parameters. So just by playing the key, you can really explore sonic territory just with velocity and aftertouch. So Devin, I noticed that you've got CV, AB, and CV, CD. Is that, I assume that means this is CV compatible and will interface with our modular systems? Absolutely. So Analog Keys has four discrete CV outputs, and they're all completely assignable. So one could be doing gate, the other could be three CVs, or they could all be four gates. And you can interface with uh, both modern and vintage modular gear. So over here, I have uh, a nice semi-modular piece. I can control it right here with analog keys. The CV outputs have their own dedicated step sequencer. They have their own dedicated step sequencer track. So for example, if I have a, I could play a preset pattern and also have this playing along with it. Wow, so this device could really serve as your master control 
for your entire modular setup right. because of that feature. Right, right, exactly. And it's important to note that the audio coming from this external hardware can be routed right back into analog keys because it has a left and a right input. The audio can be processed through analog keys digital effects, or it can even go right into the analog signal path and be processed by real analog filters and real analog overdrive. I see you've got a laptop connected to this thing, so what are we getting into with the laptop? Most people, when they see a USB cable on the back of a piece of electronic music equipment, they think it's just for um, some MIDI information, some MIDI sync. Uh, analog Keys is pretty special because I have eight channels of audio being converted under the hood and going right into my DAW. So the USB cable allows for multi-channel audio to go from Analog Keys in the DAW, and I can, it makes it very easy for me to multi-track record whatever I'm doing and then work on it after I record it. You know, throw on my favorite EQs, my favorite compressors. Does that make sense? Yeah, so how do you know that you are seeing this particular device in your DAW? Is there a plug-in that represents what this is? Exactly, exactly. So analog keys can be run as a VST or audio unit plug-in, and it's, that plug-in is free for all users. You download it from our website, electron.se, and the integration technology is called Overbridge. It's a free software suite. So what we have here is we have a VST representation of analog keys. Everything that I do on the front panel is mirrored, uh, is mirrored in the plugin. All your parameters are controllable on the front panel here and also through the beautiful graphic user interface. So whether you're more hardware oriented or you're more comfortable in a VAW environment, uh, analog keys allows you to not skip a beat with your workflow. And the eight channels that are going from here to here, that's split among these four voices, left and right. Exactly. In yeah. fact, I'll go over here to our handy utility software called the control panel, and it shows you exactly how you want to use those eight, those eight avenues for audio. So what I have here is I have one channel for voice one, voice two, voice three, voice four. Then I have one channel for the main left output, the main right output. And you'll notice I also have two additional channels available to stream to my DAW whatever's plugged in here. An important thing to note about the USB audio streaming functionality for analog keys is that it operates independently of your existing sound card setup. So that means I can have eight channels of audio streaming in and still use another sound card with my other things, but it, no. it just keeps it so simple. Yeah, and that would mean no additional uh, DSP being used from your computer. You're not taking any resources from the card. This is like you're just adding more chips, essentially, to Absolutely. your resource list. Yeah, Absolutely. That's fantastic. So now that you have this connected to your computer and you're using this essentially as a VST plugin, what are the other, what are some advantages of doing that? Well, first of all, as I explained, we have the audio streaming, but also the USB cord allows for a very, very tight sequencer synchronization. So when I hit play in my DAW, the analog key sequencer will start in perfect sync and stay in sync, something that you're not going to get with a conventional MIDI connection. Furthermore, when I connect this with USB, it allows me to do all sorts of parameter automations, which are key with modern day electronic music, and send that back to the analog keys and control all those parameters without hiccuping, without skipping a beat. The USB bus provides massive bandwidth for all sorts of parameters. And again, you're not gonna get that with a conventional MIDI cable. So when I record automation on this plugin, so to speak, in the DAW, that's essentially gonna play back via this architecture. Yeah, exactly. But you have the benefit of all of that graphic manipulation of and, and that timeline view, all the benefits that you have working with automation in a DAW, but then it will control the hardware and as can, if it was a plugin. And I can save those settings just like any other plugin. Absolutely. And in fact, when you are using analog keys with your DAW, when you save your DAW session, it actually takes a snapshot of all your patches and all your patterns that you're working with, saves it with your DAW session so that next time you open it up, the synth will snap back into shape. So, I mean, you don't have to go and, oh, you know, where was that preset that I was looking for? Is that, is that how it sounded? Oh, I, you know, where did that pattern go? I erased it. Now all your synth settings can be saved with the DAW project. I mean, it's a workflow godsend. Oh, that's great. I mean, that's gotta be great for the stage as well as the studio, because you can recall something that you're doing with your band via your laptop, not even have to worry that this is set up you properly. Got it. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. fantastic. So Devin, on this control panel software, I see that you've got input from analog keys and yeah. you can record your audio right from analog keys, but then you've got this section that says output to analog keys. So does that mean you can take from your DAW any audio into this device? You got it, exactly. Oh so what I've, yeah, what I've done here is I've activated track one 
Uh, I've activated that audio stream going back in to analog keys. So what I've got here in my DAW is just a little, just a little clip, a little loop, and I say audio two, analog keys, and then I select the bus. And if I go ahead and hit play, that audio is now running through an entire analog signal path and going back into the DAW over a single USB cable. get the idea. So that's D to A conversion going this way, and you've got A to D conversion going back that way, and you can record that information back into your DAW. I mean, that's just unlimited. This is one of the world's only VST analog sound processors, and you have a beautiful interface, and you have all the things you'd expect from a VST plugin, but you're actually running audio into a real analog machine and back again. So you can see that with the CV control, the audio inputs, as well as the multi-channel audio into your DAW, analog keys acts as a bridge between the vintage, the analog, the hardware world, and then the totally workflow-oriented, high-tech DAW production environment. Analog keys, check it out at musiciansfriend.com.